So in this video, I just wanna give you an understanding of how to work with smaller pieces of data than the ones that we saw in the previous video. In the previous video, we were working with double words, which were 32 bits in size. And those 32 bits were convenient because they were the same size as the register, and as well, they were the same size as our memory. So when we store them in memory, it takes up a single slot in memory. When we store it in a register, it takes up the whole register. And that's a very easy situation to look at because uh, everything is a consistent size. But when things get smaller in size, things start to get a little bit more complex. And it's important to understand these complexities because a lot of the data that we work with is gonna be of variable size. We could have 16-bit, we could have 8-bit values, which are very common. We could have 32-bit values. So we wanna be able to work with all of these very comfortably. So let's talk a little bit about how we can do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a file called data.s. And I'm gonna create a section for data in it. And I'm gonna declare two variables here. I'm gonna declare um, num which is going to be a byte of value one. And then I have num two, which is gonna be a byte of value two. So we have two bytes declared here, one with a value of one, one with a value of two. And what I wanna to demonstrate to you is how these values are stored in memory and how they're retrieved from memory. So let's just sort of take a simple naive approach to this and let's say, okay, um, what I wanna do is I want to load these variables into uh, two different registers. So the way that I would do that, based on what we know so far, is I would say, okay, let's move into ebx, the value of num, and let's move into, uh, say, ecx, the value of num2, and then I can move into eax, the value 1, and then I can interrupt with adh. Right, so this will load the first variable into ebx, the second variable into ecx, and then it sets up the exit system call by putting 1 into eax and then interrupting the program. So this is a very standard program that we've seen so far throughout these videos. And let's take a look at what happens when we actually do this through GDB. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just like assemble and uh, do all of the linking for this, just to set everything up. So we'll do this and then we'll do um, yeah, 386 for data, data.o. And now we have our uh, data variable completed, or our data program completed rather. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say GDB of data. And what we'll do is we'll say uh, layout ASM, I'm gonna break at start and I'm going to run. Now, just taking a look at these instructions here, you may see something sort of interesting. Take a look at the two addresses between EBX and ECX, what's being loaded into them. You have 804A000 and then 804A001. Notice that they differ by one, right? So they aren't that different from each other. For that matter, they're sitting right next to each other in memory. Now that is interesting. Let's see what happens when we try to load the first value into EBX. So we'll do step I. I'll say info registers EBX. And what you'll see here is that I get 201. That seems kind of weird, right? It was supposed to load just the value one because one was the single byte that we wanted to load in. However, instead of doing that, what happened is the following. Let me show you the actual memory address. So 804A000. Oh, sorry, I should do x over x, uh, 0x, 804A000. There we go. And this is the current uh, memory location. You can see 201 stored there, right? So 01 is the first variable that we had. And then as you can see from the address, at 001, directly beside it, we have 02, which is the second variable that we declared. So you can see that they're stored right next to each other in the same 32-bit memory slot. So what's happening here is when we try to load the first value, what happens is x86 is looking at that and it says, okay, I wanna move the 32 bits at 804A000 and I wanna move that into EBX. And that's exactly what it does. It takes that whole chunk and it moves it into the register. And that's a problem because we only wanted to get the value one. We didn't want to get the whole chunk of memory there. But because it's stored in this way, we need to be able to tell x86 that context. We need to be able to tell it, okay, just get the byte at this location rather than the whole actual 32 bits at that location. So that's what we need to look at here. That's what we need to figure out how to do. Now, just to talk a little bit about why this happens, when we work at a low level, we wanna be memory efficient. We wanna use every memory slot that we can. 
So by storing bytes next to each other, we're able to use memory more efficiently, right? If I have multiple bytes, I can store multiple of them in one 32-bit slot. It lets me use that slot more efficiently. So this is the way that x86 is going to try to work. It's going to try to maximize the memory usage by storing things next to each other in the same 32-bit slot. So this is a problem that we'll often encounter when we aren't working with uniform 32-bit values all the time. So understanding that, let's take a look at how we solve this problem. We'll get out of uh, GDB and let's go over to data and let's take a look at what we can do. So the problem lies in these instructions, these move ebx num and move ecx num2. And the problem is in the way that we reference these registers. So just to quickly talk about this a little bit, uh, we sort of have already, but just to sort of refresh it, there's, there's four main general purpose registers that we'll typically work with. They are EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX. I'm gonna to refer to these registers um, without the E and without the X, and you'll see why in a moment. So we're just gonna call these the A, B, C, and D registers. So each of these registers is able to be referenced in a variety of different ways. The way that I've been referencing these registers so far by saying EBX, ECX, is called, I believe, extended form. And what it does is it says we're referencing the whole 32-bit register when we do that. So EBX means get all of the 32 bits for the B register. That's the idea of what that syntax is telling the processor. Now, in order to tell it to get less data, we can actually reference the B register, for example, in a different way. If I remove the E, I'm left with just BX. BX is 16 bits of the 32-bit register. So it slices the register in half. So now there's just 16 bits there. So we're using just 16 bits of the register. That's what BX signifies to us. Now, if we split that 16 bits in half, we get two 8-bit pieces, right? We get um, sort of like the left half, right? Everything from the middle up to the end of the left half. That's the first 8 bits. And then we have everything from the middle to the right half, which is the next 8 bits. That's what happens when we split the 16 bits in half. We get two 8-bit chunks. Now, in order to reference one of these 8-bit chunks, what we do is we say which one we want to work with. So in the case of if I want to get the lower 8 bits, so the ones from the middle all the way to the right, these would be like the, um, the, uh, the rightmost bits. So if we're thinking in powers of 2, it's like 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. Those are the rightmost bits, right? So we're getting those lower bits. We would use BL. That gets 8 bits on the lower half of the register. If I want to get the bits on the upper half of the register, I do BH. Now there's a few different considerations with these two different segments. If we're working with just a BL and just BH, then it doesn't really matter which one we use because when we work with them, they're going to be treated as individual 8-bit registers. So BL will be its own 8 bits and then BH will be its own 8 bits. Again, we're just trying to use memory as efficiently as possible since we have two 8-bit slots, we might as well use them. Um, where this makes a difference is if you're, if you're referencing the whole B register. And the reason why that makes a difference is because if you were to place a value on the high end, it would be interpreted differently in binary compared to if it was placed in the low end. Again, think about powers of two. On the low end, you have like two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two. On the high end, it starts at two to the power of eight, I believe, and then two to the power of nine, two to the power of 10, and continues on like that. So you can see that on the high end, we have bigger numbers, and on the lower end, we have smaller numbers. So that's something to keep in mind is where we're actually placing those bits, right? And I'll demonstrate this to you as we continue on through this. Um, so for now, we'll just say that I want to work with BL, and we'll do the same here. Rather than working with CX or ECX, we're going to say CL, as in the lower eight bits of the C register. Let me show you what that does. So let's let's get an understanding of this. I'll go ahead and just create our program here, and then we'll GDB it. I'm going to break at start layout ASM, and then we're going to go ahead and run. So after we step past the first instruction, so we'll do step I, info registers BL. As you can see, it gets a value of 1. 
which is what we expected. Now, interestingly as well, if I do info registers EBX, it also has a value of one, because if you think about it, we changed the lowest bits, right? So if we look at the whole 32 bits, it's still interpreted the same way as if we looked at just the lower eight bits, because it's the same value regardless, right? So that's the idea of that. Um, same sort of idea is gonna happen with the next instruction, right? If we do it to the lower eight bits of C, then we have info registers CL has the value two now because it just got those bytes, right? So it just got the byte. And then what we do is we say info registers ECX, you see that it's still two, right? Because it's at the lower eight bits, right? So if we look at the whole 32 bits, everything is the same. So this is the idea and this is the base idea of what we're doing when we're working with those smaller numbers. And the main things that I want you to take away from this is that if you're working with 32 bits, you use the whole like EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX. If you're working in 16 bits, you would use AX, BX, CX, DX. If you're working with eight bits, you would use AL or AH, BL or BH. CL or CH, DL or DH. So that's the main key takeaway from this. Now, I wanna show you one last thing here before we finish off. And that is the idea of what happens or what differs if I use BH instead of BL and CH instead of CL. So let me just show you this because it's kind of important to understand this idea. Although I don't think it comes up really all that often, it's still a good thing to know about and just sort of keep in the back of your mind. Oh, I actually put a capital there. We want to break at start, the layout ASM. And then we will run. And then we're going to step into both of these instructions. So if we look at just BH and just CH, nothing changes. So if I do info registers BH, it's still one. If I do info registers of CH, it's still two. So that doesn't change anything. What changes is when we look at the whole register. So if I look at info registers EBX, you can see it shows 256. The reason for this is because we set the higher eight bits. So now we have a one closer to the middle of the register, right? It's somewhere over um, to the left, somewhere floating in the middle, essentially, of the register. And what it's done is it's set the bit that would be interpreted as 256 if we were to go from the right and sort of do the powers of two all the way up to where the one was set. So this is the idea of what's happening differently. If we look at the whole register, setting the high bit is going to have a different interpretation than setting the low bit because of the way that it's stored. And that's the same with ECX as well. You see we get 512 because we have two ones because of the, uh, the fact that it's two instead of one. So we get a different value. So these are the main things to keep in mind when we're working with these smaller values, right? We just need to be careful about the way that we store them and the way that we reference our registers. And if this seems like a lot of information, it is a lot to understand. There's a lot of details here. As we continue on through this course, you're gonna continually be exposed to this idea and we're gonna continue working with it. So it's gonna become more and more clear the more practice that you get with it. I encourage you to try experimenting with this and try out some of these different examples and just see what kind of results you get. You'll understand it in no time. So thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I'm gonna to continue to discuss different topics of data. We're gonna take a look at things like lists and characters and strings to get an understanding of how these interact with memory and how we are able to utilize them um, by storing them into registers and this sort of idea that we've seen with the data in these videos as well.